Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Today we're going to do a little bit of what I call an unboxing. Okay, everybody on the freaking internet calls it an unboxing. I'm going to do one here, but this is for a purpose. If you watched and followed my channel, and if you haven't, I suggest you go back a video or two. I'm not sure where it's going to be. And I tested the FVP deep cycle lead acid batteries up against, up against the Dakota lithium batteries and these are this is in a 24 volt application so two 12 volts hooked up in series to give me 24 volts well it proved to me that the dakota lithium battery charger is absolutely zero no bueno junk now dakota lithium if you want to change my mind and offer me up something better send it my way P.O. box in the description. Until then, don't try to sell any more of that uh, free battery charger or it comes with the battery charger. Now, I will tell you that the 10 amp charger, and I'm not out here to bash things, guys, but I am gonna bash it. I want you guys to trust me. I'm gonna tell you when something's junk, it's junk. So far, the batteries seem to be okay. And I say okay because I kind of was hoping that the last longer go farther dakota lithium batteries would run more than five hours on my trolling motor set at a speed of 4.5 but it did at least do it twice in a row with no degradation fvp batteries degradation so i went and bought and this is a no code genius battery charger and this is my own money. So if it's junk, I'd tell you it's junk. But I've had this battery charger in my other boat, but it's a two bank battery charger. This is a three bank battery charger. And according to this, it's supposed to be good for 12 volt mold, mode, 12 AGM, 12 volt AGM, 12 volt lithium ion, 12 volt repair. Now what I read about it on the repair part of it is pretty cool. It'll take a battery from almost zero. One volt I think it said, and work on bringing it back up. It ain't gonna take an old battery and make it a brand new battery. But it might give you a battery that, that may limp you along. So we're gonna open this one up and we're gonna show you some of the some of the reasons why I picked this. Now I'll tell you right out of the gate. It's expensive, but what isn't? What isn't? This was $280, depending on when you watch it. I'm like a kid at Christmas, I just rip it open. Who cares about the box? And they can tell when you pick this up that it's not it's not light. This is a heavy battery charger. This is meant to do some work. Has a three year warranty. Set it right there in the box. I just read it. And it has a little push button on here for 12 volt AGM and lithium. So you can select what voltage you want it to be on. I'll pull you in a little closer to get you a close-up shot of this. All right, here's a close-up look of the NoCo Genius Gen Pro 10 times 3. The times 3 means it can support three separate batteries. And they give you some serious leads. These are like six-foot leads. And they all are fused. So they all have fuses, inline fuses on them. Nice. I mean, this is this is some serious stuff. This is... I don't brag about a lot of things, but this thing, I mean, it's, it's got some weight to it. If that don't weigh five to eight pounds, I'd be surprised. I mean, that feels like a, it's heavy. And the other thing I recommend that I'm going to do, that I'm going to do, is you got this little plug-in dooley bopper here. You can plug this into here, like that. And then you got this guy right here. Mount this to your boat. It has a gasket on the back side. You mount this to your boat, three screws, sealed off, 
then you've got that. You mount, you flush mount that on the top of your boat or somewhere on your boat that's convenient for you to get to. And what that does is that allows you to plug in 110, bam. When you're, not, when you're done charging, you pull that off, close this up, this is watertight. It's definitely worth the, I don't know, $22, $23 it cost. It's some good stuff. It's also made by NOCO. NACO, NOCO. But I'm excited to get this put in the boat. And whether I decide to keep, because you can go 12 volt, AGM, lithium, and 12 volt repair. So whatever you decide, however you decide to hook it up to your boat. The cool part about this is, the other thing it'll do is whatever mode you set it in, when you unplug it and plug it back in, it will remember what mode it was last used in and go to that mode. So you don't have to sit there and select it every time. This is waterproof. I mean, this case is solid. That's IP68, there you go. Designed in USA, made in Vietnam. Output 12 volt, 10 amps times three. Input 110, 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, 500 watt. That's the model there, Gen Pro 10X3. And it's got two nice mounting lugs here. So I'll put, drill some holes in my boat and mount this up there so she's fastened up nice and tight. It's got a nice rubber surface back here. So when you mount it, it's not going to vibrate. It's just an awesome product. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying this video as much as I am making it. I'm excited to get this in the boat, to get a good solid charger in there that's going to support and, and keep my batteries healthy. This little adapter, we're going to show you how I install that. Uh, I forget what size. I have a size checker. Let's see what size hole we got to drill. Looks like a 1.893, so just a hair over an inch and seven eighths. I think. A two inch hole would be about perfect. Gives you plenty of gasket around your hole. So that's what I'm going to be using a hole saw and putting a two inch hole. And then I'll use some stainless screws to socket down tight and seal her up. Two inch. Alrighty. I got to wait until it's daylight out because I don't want to go do this in the dark because the video camera doesn't seem to work very well in the dark. If you guys got any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll get out there and get this put in. It shouldn't take me very long. It's honestly going to take me longer to hook the wires up than it is probably to mount it. Uh, this will take a minute. But the nice thing is this has, I think, a six-foot cord. So you can go quite a different areas in the boat. Right now, I currently have a plug in my boat sticking up like this out of the front on the nose with a little slack in it that I can pull out and plug it into a drop cord. That was on the old charger. Just to give you a di this is the old charger. What just fell out of it? Nope, nothing. So this one had for 24, let's see, da, 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 24 volt, it was a 50 watt, 2.0 amp, 2.08 amp, <laughs> indoor use only. This has been outdoor use, but it doesn't see the light of day. It's under my casting deck. It doesn't see water, rain, humidity, yes, but that's it. And this one still worked fine. There was nothing wrong with this charger, but it doesn't do, and it's a 24 volt charger, but it's not designed for lithium. The other nice thing about these NOCO Geniuses on my other boat, you can leave it plugged in all the time. It's a battery main charger slash maintainer. So it will let the batteries do a little bit of it's up and down and charge it, bring it back up and let it come down. So it will keep your batteries fully charged. So whenever I'm ready to go fishing, you unplug, you couple, you're gone. That's the way it should be. We're gonna walk you through step by step. First thing I'm gonna do to mount my plug in, I got my rod holder here. I've got my fish finder mount here. I've got other cables that run right under this area. So I'm gonna 
put a one inch or two inch hole right here to be my plug in. And I'll tell you right now, this is a very, very dull um, hole saw that has its advantages. It won't try to grab and rip. We've slid the plug down through the two inch hole. I put three stainless screws to hold it down. It's sealed up. That's our plug. We'll go inside the boat now and we'll get it to where we can plug in the battery charger. Okay, I'm gonna use an inch and a quarter bit to go down through here. All right, we're plugged in, we're plugged in here. Now I gotta get the, I just wanna get the terminals hooked up on this. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll. I do realize we have some low light conditions going on here, but as you can see here, you can push these buttons here and change it from just on to three different types of batteries. Right there is the blue, which is lithium ion. And as you can see here, it'll show you how many bars of charge it has on it. So both batteries are actually pretty low. So we're going to take these up to full charge. I'm guessing once it's full charge, it'll be up to four and full red and won't be uh, pulsing like it currently is. We'll check back in tomorrow after it's fully charged and we'll take a look at what's going on. The third bank over here, I don't have hooked up yet. That's going to go all the way back to my back starting battery for the uh, inboard motor. And that will be set for lead acid. Now the cool part about this is when you unplug it and plug it back in, it's supposed to remember the setting. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it right now and see what it does. I'm going to set you guys down. Okay, I just unplugged it and plugged it back in. Yes, it looks like it took right off where it started. Let's we'll see the red lights come up. There we go. And it's back to charging. We'll take another look at it in the daylight and see what we've got. But uh, so far, so good. And uh, as you can see here, I've got my new battery box I built in here. We'll get another shot of it in the daylight. And I actually finished putting the foam flooring all the way underneath the battery box to actually give some more cushion. I have foam also in the battery box. So these batteries are now secured, locked down, can't go anywhere, and they're a lot lighter. Well, that completes this section. We'll do a quick review tomorrow. Actually, I have the breakers right here tripped to the opposition, and I do apologize for the low light. It is almost dark out, and I wanted to get this done. We'll see you tomorrow when it's done charging. All right, folks, here it is the next day. I had the NoCo Genius plugged in overnight, 
as you can clearly see now before there was red on the far left and now it's green fully charged on the far right of the each battery indicator now the one on the far right does not have a battery hooked to it up hooked up to it just yet that'll be hooked up to my starter battery but my two lithium batteries are now fully charged and looking good i can't say enough good things about this gen pro 10 3 10x3 uh there again i bought this with my own money i have another noco genius it's just a two bank this is a step up from that uh just because it can handle different types of batteries uh, I could see one of these things being hanging on your garage wall in the winter time, for instance, and just plugging in and keeping your batteries up to snuff over the winter because these are these will work as a battery tender, battery maintainer. Um, and they cover so many realms when it comes to battery care and battery maintenance. So that's how I've got mine installed. You might have asked, why did I put it there? Well, I have a casting deck that'll cover this area. And when I've got the casting deck on, I can actually see the lights through the other side of the boat. So I can actually still get a visualization of when they're fully charged. Now, as you'll see here, I'm gonna go over here and unplug it. Right there, there's a yellow plug right there. Right there. I'm gonna unplug it and you'll watch what the battery charger does. Just that simple. I could put this cover back on it here. It's all protected, weather tight. I go back over here. It's just that simple to plug it in. The charger does remember what it was last doing. So right now it's, you see it blinking red on the low red side. So it's doing a little uh, research or whatever it does, whatever you want to call it, it's doing for the battery. And it is still mark, it's still showing lithium. Now, as you can see on that left one there, because these were fully charged, the left-hand battery, the first one went from blinking red to solid red. Now the second one is blinking red. And see those, and it's now gone to solid red. Now the orange, it looks like it's an orange color, is checking things out and going, hey, are we up good, good at this point? And it's just this, this thing, is uh, I would, the way it's programmed is very methodical. Now the green is kind of blinking a little bit. And when it goes solid green, fully charged. Now these are both fully charged. So this thing's going through its cycle and, and just making sure the battery is what it is. Very smart charger, very smart charger. Right now it's sitting at a full charge showing on my meter, it's showing 13.4 volts. So and as you can see now, the reds are all gone. It's all green. The green's flickering a little bit. It'll go solid green. When I came out here, as you saw, they were both solid green. I think it's a pretty slick trick. So in a matter of another minute or so, that one on the far, on the one in the middle there, uh, that's hooked up to the other battery, it'll do the same thing. So it's just going through its process, but uh, it's just very cool. It's a, it's a very nice battery charger. Now, as I look at this thing through my lens here, it's, I can see it blinking a lot, like fast blinking, but that could be just because of the type of light it is. I'll be curious to see what it looks like when I see it up on my screen. Right now, it's actually green and going soft and then bright, soft and then bright, but the camera can detect things that our eyes can't see. But yeah, the one in the middle now is showing the orange blinking it'll go green as well. Anyway, you get the general idea. Well, folks, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Uh, I'm trying to, I put this out here. You know, I, I obviously I had to do this for my boat. I didn't have to share the installation of a battery charger or what I bought for a battery charger. But the way I look at it is if it helps, you, helps my viewers out in making a decision, and sometimes these more expensive purchases are a hard decision. I totally get that. I had to swallow twice just to go, ugh, 280 some dollars for a battery charger. But by the same token, if you buy in even the lead acid batteries, I, I would still have this charger in my boat if I just bought lead acid batteries, deep cycle lead acids. And the reason I say that is because you want them to last as long as, you, as they can. 
And in order to do that, you got to maintain them the best way you can. In my opinion, the best way you can is with a good, solid uh, battery charger. So this this is a what I would call a solid. Like I said, it's heavy. Uh, there seems like there's a lot of thought put in this battery charger, charger, a lot of programming that has been done to it to make it is what it is to protect. To, and it, it's like it knows in its brain what kind of battery you have. And you select the battery that you want to charge and it goes, yes, this is the battery. This is a lithium. Now let's charge it this way. No, it's a lead acid battery. Let's charge it in this manner in order to keep the plates clean. This, it just has that technology inside of it. I wish I understood more of it, but then I probably wouldn't be doing videos. I'd be a genius somewhere programming, and I'm not that guy. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I'll, I'll leave it at that. So folks, I hope, ooh, just, I'm just now looking over there. The middle one is now green again. So, and it, the voltage, take another quick look. 13, 13.7, 13 that's 13.7. So it's hanging right in there. It's, uh, I'm pretty tickled with it. You guys probably can't tell. I just, nobody should be this excited about a stupid battery charger, but I am, I really am. So uh, if I end up with another boat, I got Big Blue over there. Now the difference on Big Blue there is I'm not sure if they make a trolling motor with a long enough shaft to get to the water off the nose of that boat. But if they do, believe you me, I'll be measuring when I'm in the water with that thing and going, ugh, be really hard not to put a, a Minn Kota Altera up there with a couple of batteries, just because I'm gonna have a kicker motor on the back of that boat and I'm gonna have the inboard outboard, but I wouldn't mind having a trolling motor. I like to have four means of propulsion. One's required by law here, that's a paddle. The other three are not. But I can have a trolling motor, uh, inboard outboard kicker, or not an inboard outboard, an outboard kicker, and then my inboard outboard as my main motor. So, cause this joker ain't gonna paddle. And you, an 18 foot boat, you can paddle it, but it's gonna be a lot of work and you're not gonna get anywhere very fast. A 22 and a half foot boat, it's gonna get, the situation is gonna be much worse, especially in any kind of a breeze. If any of you have ridden in a low profile car and then gotten into, let's just call it a minivan on a windy day, the wind pushes much different on those vehicles, right? Exactly. So you're gonna have a, you gotta have a good means to overcome that wind uh, and a paddle just ain't one of them. It just isn't gonna be. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful. I think I've already said that. And this is Mike saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Please like and subscribe. Please leave comments down below if you have any questions about what I did. I will leave links, as always, in the description below. If I miss a link, send me a message. I'll add the link and I'll send you the link directly as well through your comments. And we'll go from there. This is Michael. Did I say that already? saying if it ain't broke fix it till it is see you on the next video i'm out